God might want you to quit your job, yes you, and to go full time into Christian ministry. If I could show you five reasons why you need to quit your job and to go into full time ministry, if I could show you five signs that God might be calling you into the ministry, would you be willing to take the big step of faith and go into full time ministry? Number one, the Lord lays a burden on your heart for a particular ministry. Perhaps it's children, perhaps you, you love working with children and you want nothing more than to see these little boys and girls come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you look at teenagers and you feel sorry for them in the world they have to grow up in with all of this temptation and you want to help them. You want to be a youth worker. Maybe you have a particular burden on your heart for a country. You look at the people of China, you hear about the, the, the culture of China and you have a burden to to, to go there, to go to the people who've never even heard the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and that is your passion. Perhaps you have a desire to stand on the streets and be a street preacher and this is what you want to do to see men and women come to faith. Perhaps you look at the elderly in your church or you look at the lonely and you just have a desire to, to visit them, to care for them, to, to teach them, to build them up in the Word of God. That might just be a sign that the Lord God is calling you to be a shepherd, is calling you to be a pastor of his flock, of his people, to minister over a church. I'm in a, a very privileged position. I'm a full-time evangelist and I'm so grateful that the Lord has, has given me this ministry. And if you're an evangelist too, what I'm about to say, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. When I walk down the streets, I just look at people and there's this deep, sense of sorrow in my heart and I just look at them and I say Lord please don't let them go to hell please save them and, and there's something more than that I want them to find the love of God I want them to find the joy it is to to follow the Lord Jesus Christ to know that your sins are forgiven and this isn't something that we can just psych ourselves up to. This isn't something we can work ourselves up to by, by listening to some spiritual songs or hearing a sermon. This is a deep abiding work of God, something that God by his spirit gives us. And these burdens that we're talking about very often, they're not from us, they're from the Lord God himself. Number two, Christians and the church in particular notice that you've got gifts in the ministry. Perhaps people notice, yeah, that young man, that young lady, they really do get alongside people. They've got a way about, of communicating, of getting alongside people and being friendly. They might be a good pastor, you know. Have you ever considered preaching and then you get invited to preach and, and you stand up in the congregation and the people of God are upbuilt. And then Christians start to say things like this. They say, have you ever considered being a preacher? Have you ever considered being a pastor? Perhaps you, you do a children's meeting and people think the way that man or woman told the Bible story to children, that was incredible. You've got a real gift with children. And suddenly you'll get not just one person, but two, three, four people, many, the whole church will start to notice that you have got gifts in the ministry and it will be very hard to hide it. I remember in my own situation, about five years ago, there was a members meeting which took place where people would go into the side, the church would decide, is Joe going to be called to full-time evangelistic ministry? And we all had to vote on it. And I myself also got the chance to vote. When the votes were counted in, it was a unanimous decision. Every single person wanted me to go into full-time ministry, except for one person, me. I actually voted against myself because at the time I felt unworthy, I felt unable, I felt incompetent at doing this. And sometimes you might not feel like you can do it. You might not feel like you've got the ability to do it. But I'll tell you what, if the church sends you, you know that's a very strong sign that the Lord God wants you in this work because his bride is saying, go, go ahead, take this gospel out. Number three, God speaks directly to you. Very often, if a man or woman is called to be a missionary, to be a pastor, to be a minister of the gospel, God will speak to them directly. He will make it very clear. This normally happens as we read the Word of God. As we're doing our daily Bible readings, there'll be certain verses which will just lock down and convict our spirit that, wow, 
God wants me to do this. I remember when I was reading the Bible and I read the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus said this, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And I knew in that moment, God wants you to be a full-time evangelist. God wants you to, to be a street preacher and to take this good news out to a lost world. But sometimes God speaks to us in other ways. Maybe your pastor preached a sermon on the Great Commission and this great desire to go out and to take this commission out, to, to make disciples of all nations, that fell upon you in, in that moment. Perhaps you were singing a hymn, facing a task unfinished, and again this, this desire, this burden to reach the lost came upon you. Perhaps you've had a dream or a vision. That does happen to people where they're called very directly by the Lord. And there are ministers, there are missionaries around today who say they had a dream where the Lord told them to go to a particular nation, to speak to a particular person. And the Lord wrought a great work of salvation there. Number four, you're already involved, actively involved in ministry. There's no point going down into the deep jungles of Papua New Guinea to reach a an unreached tribe with the gospel if you're not prepared to knock on doors if you're not prepared to go to your local street corner and reach the people your own kinsmen your own people in your own neighborhood with the gospel God wants people who are going to be servants where they are Acts 1 verse 8 says this and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth and there's a principle here. These men, these men at the time were called to, to be witnesses first in Jerusalem, where they were based, where they were locally living. And then they were to spread out to Judea, to Samaria, and then to the very ends of the earth. And likewise, dear friends, we are called first to serve in our local churches, to help out with the kids' ministry, to stack the chairs, to, to collect the hymn books, to pour the coffee, to, to knock on doors in our neighbourhood. We need to reach the people who are near to us. We need to learn to be servants first in the little things which the Lord has entrusted to us. And then perhaps the Lord will entrust us if we are faithful with much, much more. Perhaps you yourself will be entrusted with a church of your own a ministry of your own perhaps you'll be trusted with a tribe of your own that has never heard the name of the Lord Jesus Christ but you've first got to be faithful and serve in your local church evangelistically and in every way you possibly can number five the final sign which the Lord might just be calling you to quit your job and to go into full-time Christian work is this you need to be patient I remember when I first got saved, I was uh, 18 years old and I'd made friends with an older evangelist, a man called Vinnie Commons. And I remember he gave me his little business card and on it it said, evangelist. And I just remember seeing that and thinking, I would love to be an evangelist one day. I remember going to open airs with Vinny and watching him in the open air. And I just had this longing, in a way, to, to, to be able to do this full time, to reach the lost. I loved being out in the open air. I loved sharing the gospel. So I approached um, my former pastor at the time and I said to him, David, I'd really like to be a full-time evangelist. That's what I think I want to do with my life. That's what I want to do career-wise, if you like. And he said to me this, he said, when he was a younger man, he wanted to be a pastor. And his father was already a pastor. So he told his father about this desire that he wanted to be a minister of a church. And his dad said this to him, he said, if the call is real, it'll still be there in 10 years time. If the call is real, it will still be there in 10 years time. And he said, Joe, that's the same kind of thing I'm saying to you. If you really are called to be an evangelist for the Lord Jesus Christ, the call will still be there in 10 years time. Now, I didn't quite wait 10 years. I probably waited about five, six, uh, seven years maybe. But as time went on, I still had this desire. It just did not go away. And that's how you know that it is a work of God because if the Lord really wants you in ministry, this desire will not go away. A great deal of damage has been done by young men who have gone into the ministry too soon. And I look at my own life where I did about three years of secular work 
And to be honest, I wish I did a little bit more because you need to know what it is to, to work alongside non-believers. You need to know what it is to, to work in this world because we can't all live in Christian bubbles. We can't all just pretend that everything's okay because there's a vast world out there with a mindset, with cultures that think completely different to how we think in our Christian way of life. So do take your time. Don't rush into anything. There is a great need. There is a great need to reach the lost. So again, be serving in your church. Be doing everything you can evangelistically to reach the lost in your spare time. But at the same time, do take your time whether you want to rush into full-time ministry. You just need to make sure that this is definitely a genuine call by the Lord God. Now I do wonder if there's someone watching this right now and you've said, well, yeah, Joe, I don't think I am actually called to be in the ministry. I'm not sure I do have this, this deep calling on my life. Well, there is absolutely nothing wrong in that whatsoever. You yourself are a missionary. We're all missionaries. There are people in your workplace, there are people at your school, at your college, that only you can reach. You are the only Christian that they know and you have been placed there by the Lord God to reach them. So be brave with them. Take opportunities to share with them the gospel. Be sensitive, be loving, but yes, please do be bold and share with them. And also remember this, if every single one of us was full-time in the ministry, we wouldn't have any money to support missions. I thank the Lord for, for the maths teacher who supports my ministry, for the data analysis, for, for the postman. I am so grateful for these Christian men and women who are so willing to, to give generously to the work of missions and to enable me to be able to, to carry on the Lord's work. And as I said again, it's a total privilege and I'm so grateful for everything the Lord is doing. If you want to get a ton of tips on how to share the gospel, check out this playlist. And also, of course, don't forget to subscribe.